ever. So why are we living that way? I truly do believe that God wants us to be wealthy. God desires for us to live our best You can life. have everything that you want in this life. You can have the money, the family, the marriage, the business, the car, whatever it is that you want. You can have it. Wealth is your birthright. You deserve to be wealthy. These are the secrets of a money mogul. The keys to living an abundant life. Hey moguls, welcome to episode 9 of the Secrets of a Money Mogul podcast. I am so happy that you are still with me. If you are brand new here, welcome to our world. Um, Rate and subscribe. I'm so thankful that you are here. And if you are someone that's been rocking with me for the last couple of weeks, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the love, the support, and all the feedback. Um... And today's going to be another amazing episode. So thank you for listening. Um, Before we get started, I just want to say a couple of things. First off, if you did not get a chance to go through the prayer challenge, but you want to go through the prayer challenge, it is ready. Um, You can now sign up at any time um, and go through the seven days. So the prayer, the prosperity prayer challenge is a seven-day challenge of intentional prayers for your prosperity and your financial breakthrough. And what we are praying for over those seven days, um, there's going to be scriptures, there's going to be, there's video from the live prayer challenge. So there's video from the live prayer challenge, there's daily scriptures, um, daily uh, reflection questions that you kind of do every morning. There's a journal, um, and it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing challenge. And I would love for you to take seven days to really unlock what God is, is wanting to give you in your life. Kind of like breaking through this belief that God doesn't want us to be wealthy and not only just saying that, but breaking through it with scripture, you know, um, and prayer. And I've talked about that here on the podcast, but I'm so happy to have something um, that you guys can refer back to. You can sign up, you can watch the videos at a later date. Um, Of course, you'll have the scriptures, the workbook, everything. So I'm so thankful that that's ready for you guys. If you missed it, definitely sign up. I'm going to have the link in the show notes, but it's mymoneymogul.com slash pray. I'm still booking speaking engagements for 2019, so if you have an event um, in 2019 and you would like for me to be a speaker, I do keynotes and breakout sessions. I would love to have a discussion about that, Um, so please email me at hello at mymoneymogul. I can get you my speaker one sheet and my rates, and we can talk about uh, how I can be of service and what kind of value I can add to your audience at your event. Last but not least, I am still offering, um, I still have a few coaching spots available. So if you would like to be coached by me, please feel free to fill out the application. I would love to help you level up in your life, in your business, um, in, in any area of your life. I am there to assist you. So I mainly coach on um, business, wealth, and life. So I'd be happy to help you, but let's get into today's episode because I'm just kind of rambling, taking care of those small little things. Uh, So today we are going to talk about upgrading your life. I find it funny that, um, and this episode is kind of sparked by an email that I sent. If you guys are on my email list, you guys heard kind of the beginning of this, but I was having a conversation with a, a mentor of mine. We were talking about how people upgrade their um, different things in life. Like it's very common to upgrade your car. You know, after a while, um, people want a new car. They don't want the car that they've had for the same 10 years or the same five years. There's people that upgrade their car every two years. Um, They're upgrading their car so often. So it's very common to upgrade your car. You know, with cell phones, it's super common to upgrade your cell phone. I mean, 
iPhone's coming out with a new iPhone every year. Samsung's coming out with a new Samsung every year. They have the Google Pixel. They have all these cool new phones that do everything. And it's just rare that you see people with older phones. Most people have, you know, some of these new high tech phones. And I find it funny how people upgrade so many different things, especially material things in their life, but they never upgrade themselves. They never upgrade their lives. And then they look around at their results. And this might be you and I might be speaking to you right now, but they look around at their results and their life is the same. They look up and 10, five, five, 10 years have gone by and nothing has changed. Their financial situation hasn't changed. Um, the person who they are hasn't changed. The same issues that they've been dealing with have not changed. And I want to, to, to put this out there, but no material thing is ever going to change you. It's never going to change who you are inside the house, the car, Um, The material things are not going to give you the results that you desire. If you are really desiring to upgrade your life, you have to upgrade your life from the inside out. Um, So I want to encourage you to upgrade. I mean, this is the time of year where it's the perfect time for reflection. It's the end of the year. Um... 2019 is coming up. I'm not sure when you're listening to this episode, but 2019 is like literally just around the corner. I think we have like 33 days or something like that, 32 days until 2019. And it's the perfect time of year where people are reflecting and kind of saying, okay, what goals did I meet? What goals didn't I meet? Um, When year after year, you know, You could set the same goals and still not meet them. Like for me, I was doing some reflection the other day and I was recognizing that even though I spent 20, what year was that? 2017 pregnant because I gave birth at the beginning of 2018. I literally have had a goal to lose weight every single year for like the last six years. Like to me, that's kind of ridiculous. It's like I'm obviously writing it down because I desire it, but I'm not taking the steps to do it. So where is the disconnect? Because that's an area of my life that I want to upgrade, that I want to level up in, but I'm not doing the the things necessary to do it. So that's one thing that I'm working on. And one thing that I'm really um, exploring as far as how are we going to upgrade this level of my life in 2019? Because I am not, (laughs) not writing that down as a new year's resolution in 2020. It's just not happening. Like I think six years is enough. Six years is enough to kind of try to keep striving for the same goal. And granted, I only get one year off on there because that year I was pregnant. I can't, um, (laughs) I can't write loose weight, uh, cause I have to gain weight, but even still, you know, there comes a time where we need to just level up in an area of our of our lives. We really just need to upgrade. So um, I think one of the reasons that people struggle or that you might struggle with um, co- consumerism and what consumerism is, is like when people are really just trying to replace emotional baggage with, with stuff, um, being consumed by stuff. Uh, but I think one of the reasons why people are our struggle with consumerism or are are consumed with consumerism is because they need to upgrade themselves. They need to upgrade who they are inside. Um, And they're trying to fill that void, maybe fill a particular void with stuff. So um, sometimes they're trying to over overcompensate for something that they feel is missing in their life. So maybe that be a lack of love. Maybe that be um, a lack of self-worth, maybe that be some self-doubt. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely that can be, um, what do you, what do you call it? That can definitely, that can be like, well, self-worth, self-doubt, but it can be like past emotional issues that are showing up in your lives today. 
So upgrading your life can be very uncomfortable and it can be very overwhelming. And it can be one of those things where it's like, where do you start? Right. So you may be out there. You may be like, look, I did some reflection. Um, you know, I, I have the latest iPhone, but my life is still crap. I'm ready to upgrade my life. You know, I'm ready to upgrade who I am. I'm ready to upgrade my business. Like I'm ready to move things to the next level. I'm ready to upgrade my finances. Like I don't want to be in debt for 45 years. Like I was listening to Brian Tracy and he talks about, um, one of his colleagues that began working when they were like 15, 16, and they were working at some type of furniture store and they leased um, furniture from that furniture store because it was their first job. So they allowed you to obtain uh, credit before you could actually, you know, before you had established anything. So you were able to take out credit with no credit. And um, you know, that was his first time getting into debt. He was maybe $2,000 in, in debt or $1,000 in debt buying this furniture. And then, you know, Brian Tracy talks about how, um, Brian Tracy is much older. So he talks about, you know, 50 years later, he's still in debt and he's still working to get out of debt, you know? And it's like, at some point, what, when are we, when are we going to actually see the upgrade? <laughs> like, when I order a new phone, I don't expect to see the old phone in the box. Like I expect to see the new phone. I expect to see the upgrade. I expect to be like, pull it out the box and be like, Ooh, yes, this is, this is nice. Right. I expect to see all the lovely new features that all of our phones have that half of them we don't even use, but that's neither here nor there. So um, the first step is recognizing exactly where you are and where you want to go. So I think it's Lisa Nichols that says that most people want the convenience of transformation without any inconvenience. So it's like we want to transform our lives. We want to be in a completely different place in one year and three years and five years. Um, but but we don't want to do the work. Right. Working to transform your life can be very uncomfortable and it can be hard, like downright hard. Um one thing that I was going to say earlier was, um, as I'm looking through my notes, I realized I skipped over some things, but most people want the convenience of transformation, but they don't want to be inconvenienced. I didn't want to be inconvenienced. One reason that, you know, even though my business was fairly successful in the first year that it launched, the second year I struggled was because I wanted the, I wanted the results without the work if that makes sense. Like I still wanted to make good money. I still wanted to have the cash flow come in, but I didn't want to be present. I didn't want to show up every day. I didn't want to show up um, the way I needed to in my business. So it's like, you don't necessarily get one without the other. So how are we going to transform your life? How are we going to level up your life? How are we going to upgrade your life? and add just a, an, an, an ounce of inconvenience, like, but it's make it tolerable, make it worth it, right? The why is so strong that it's like, it, it pulls us to do the things that we need to continue to do. You know, like we're, we're wanting to, to live out our purpose, right? And do what God's called us to do. And we are just so motivated by that, that the inconvenience doesn't even matter to us. So learning to, to tolerate that inconvenience and learning that it's just a growing pain. It's helping us to level up in our lives. Um, so I'm kind of learning how to balance it all now, how to balance being a mom, being a wife, being a business owner, being a podcaster, um, all these different things. I'm learning to kind of balance, but I want to give you um, four ways to upgrade your life. So four ways that you can upgrade your life uh, before the end of the year. Just, just things that you can kind of just put into, into habit. Uh, so 
Let's get into that. So the first thing that you can do to upgrade your life is to upgrade your mindset. So you cannot change or upgrade your life without changing your mindset. Everything that you see, every change that you see starts in the mind. Um, it, it, it manifests or it comes to life in, in reality, in our physical in our physical world, but before anything happens, God gives you a vision. God, you know, you see the plan. So when the Wright brothers developed the airplane, even though no one else knew what they were developing or or they didn't understand what they were trying to do, like they had a vision, like it was there in their mind. It may not have been there in the physical realm. They may not have had an actual physical product, but when they started developing it, it was already in their mind. It was already outlined in their mind. Maybe not all the small, minute details, um, but before you can see any effective change in your mind, you ha- I mean, in your life, you have to level up your mindset. You have to upgrade your mindset. Um, and one thing is that our thoughts become our actions and our actions influence our feelings. So sometimes we are just waiting to to feel a certain way before we start to change, before we start to do more things in our lives. I think that's one of the reasons that I haven't really lost the weight that I wanted to lose. It's like I'm waiting to to feel like working out. I'm waiting to feel like like eating healthy, but that that's not how this works. It's like I need to do the work. I need to establish the habits. Um, so one thing that we have to do is upgrade our mindset or if you're telling yourself, I can't do this, like that's what you're going to see. You're going to see not being able to do this. You're going to see, you know, if I tell myself that I'm fat and out of shape, that's what I'm going to see. And that's how I'm going to live my life. My habits are going to follow that. So begin to change your self-talk. Um, and I've always been a huge, huge affirmations person or declarations person, kind of like speaking, you know, things that you want to see as if they're already there. Like, you know, I am strong or I, I can do this or, um, you know, I am wealthy. And now I kind of do affirmations and scriptures. So now that I'm kind of strengthening my walk with God, I'm not only saying affirmations, but I'm saying scriptures. So it's not just I can do this, but it's I can do this because, you know, God in your word, you say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, you know, you gave me the strength. Like, let's go. Like my self-talk has completely changed, I would say, in the last year or so, um, mainly because I had to pull myself out of a slump. Like I was just kind of in a place where I was not happy with where my business was and I wanted to quit. And it's funny because I was reading a devotional about um, how the enemy plays with our mind and he constantly reminds us of the of the things we didn't do or the things we didn't accomplish um, or where we fell short And that can cause us to want to quit when really we should be focusing more on how far we've come or what we've done, um, having gratitude for where we are in life. That kind of goes back to last week's episode when I talked about gratitude. Um, But yeah, you have to upgrade your self-talk. You have to change your self-talk. And you have to have the mindset that you're never going to give up. Like you have to tell yourself from the beginning that giving up is not an option. Like this year, I'm probably going to um, definitely, definitely follow my my weight loss journey on my personal um, Instagram page. It's uh, at Jaleesa Ann, but I'm definitely going to make it like a public journey because it's something that I know, you know, I've. I've got to do, (laughs) Um, I've got to work on. So the first way to upgrade your life is to change your mindset. So the second way to upgrade your life is to upgrade your circle. Um, I, I am friends with people that I've been friends for years, 
Um, so I, I'm definitely not one of those person that's like cut everybody off. You know, you, if you've been friends with them, they're, I don't think you should stay in toxic, toxic relationships, friendships, um, romantic relationships at all. Like if people are toxic in your life, definitely cut them off. But I do tend to build lasting relationships with people. Like some of my closest friends, we've been friends for like over 15 years. Um, but that does not necessarily mean that I don't build new relationships. Um, my business was originally built on relationships, on referrals, on being around other women who are in business, who we can help each other with our services. So it's very important that you don't just stay in your comfort zone around the people that you're used to be, you're used to being around, but that you actually do upgrade your circle and get around people who are doing the things that you want to do, who are becoming the the people that you want to become, um, who are also leveling up in their life because it helps you to not want to be complacent. If you see everybody else around you working and grinding and doing it, well, not grinding because, um, but working and doing the things necessary to accomplish their goals and, you know, accomplishing big goals, you're going to want to do it. And that's why social media is one of those things that is like good and bad because it it's a highlight reel. So people are showing you the best part of their lives. You know, I think my, my husband was talking the other day and he was like, everybody seems like on social media, like everybody's buying a house right now. Like that's the thing. So now a lot of my friends want to buy a house because that's what they see other people buying a house. And it's like, if you didn't see that on social media, would you still want to buy a house? Like some people, yes. Some people, no. Some people know they want to move to a different state soon or they're applying for, um, you know, that this particular place is not their final destination and they don't necessarily want to to do that, but they feel social pressure um, to to like live out these lives, to do these things only because the people around them are doing it. Well, The same way that it can affect you negatively can affect you positively. So what if the people around you are doing things that are positive, like, like, you know, buying a house that could be, a well, it could be a great financial decision and it could be a terrible financial decision all at the same time. And I know that because I come from that financial background, so uh, it can be a blessing and a curse. And if you're ready for it, that's amazing. But if you're not ready for it, it can be something that is so heavy on your finances. Um, and I know people say things like, oh, it's it's cheaper. It's cheaper than renting. It can be. But that's not necessarily the case. Most people, when most people that say that, they don't, first of all, they don't get a house that's cheaper than their rent. And then they don't have any savings. Some people don't have the the savings and the things that it takes to maintain a house. Like if something breaks down or, you know, if you need to get a new roof or you need to replace the AC unit or some of these things, the furnace, some of these things are very expensive to replace. It's not um, a cheap replacement and they find themselves deeper in debt trying to keep up with the maintenance for this. Um, but what if your circle is doing the things that, you know, leveling up their lives, living their full potential, writing the books that they want to write, starting the businesses that they want to start, um, I think me myself, I I make sure that I'm around women who are not only ambitious and have um, goals and are running businesses, but that are also married and have kids. Like it's very important for those type of women to be in my circle because I love being around women who are attempting to balance it all. I mean, nobody has it all together, but I know that in my life, I want I want to have it all like like, you know, I want the the 
the Beyonce life, the banging body, you know, I don't, we don't, we have no idea what her relationship's like, but I want an actual, you know, amazing marriage and relationship, you know, the kids and everything and still have the amazing business and the amazing cash flow and, and have the money and the things that I need to leave a legacy for my kids. So I tend to, um, be in those types of circles with those types of women, but I'm still friends with people that I've been friends with for years and years and years. But lately I've been very intentional about my friendships and the people that I've been connecting with. And a lot of them have um, these characteristics where they kind of have it all in all areas of their lives. But the first thing that you need to do to upgrade your circle is you need to be the person that you are trying to attract. You do not want to become a leech in any relationship, in any situation. It's like some people walk into friendships and relationships with their hand wide open. Like, what can you give me? What what can I get from you? And that doesn't feel good on, on the other end at all. And I, I don't know if people do it subconsciously, but I've even felt it from <clears throat> from some people. I'm like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, I... I don't know. I don't know if you've ever hung out with somebody and you just felt like they were just trying to get something from you. Like, I don't know. It's just it's not a good feeling. So you need to be the person that you are trying to attract. You don't necessarily have to be them 100 percent. You don't have to be perfect, but you at least have to be striving for it. Um, I can't you, you don't want to be a leech to all your friends. Right. Give more than you take from people. Give to people more than you take from people. Like when I'm friends with people, I pour into my friends and the next thing that you need to do is you need to be genuine and you need to be authentic when building your relationships. Like don't be fake. Don't walk into situations thinking, oh, you know, I'm trying to level up my life and level up my friendships. So let me go find me some friends that are, you know, doing it all or have amazing businesses or have amazing relationships and let me, um, you know, see what I can get or learn from them. No, like bring something to the table, be the person you're trying to attract, give more than you take, um, and then be genuine and be authentic and kind of let it flow naturally. So the third way that you need to upgrade your life and level up your habits is, um, or upgrade your life, is that you need to upgrade your habits. Everything in your life you have right now or you don't have because of a habit, (laughs) You know, I don't necessarily have the body that I want right now. Um, as we're, we've been talking about my weight this whole episode, I don't necessarily have the body that I want right now because of my habits. I have a real bad habit of making cookies at night. I love having like cookies and milk like right before bed. Don't ask me where that habit even came from. I just love cookies. I don't even necessarily like cookies that much, but lately I have been wanting cookies every night before bed. I make me like a couple cookies with milk. Um, I also have a habit of not waking up and and working out like I used to. I used to be a real big um, gym person. Like I was always working out. I was always doing yoga, um, walking. I've never been a runner. I hate running. So running is not one of the things that has ever been a habit for me. Um, But in order to upgrade your life, you've got to upgrade your habits. So um, sometimes focus is is, uh, all that we need. Like we just need to focus on building small habits. Um, So instead of waiting to feel a certain way, we are focused on changing the habits. So I know that Um, I don't necessarily need to feel a certain way to get up every morning and work out for at least 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes. Like I can commit to that. It may not be an hour. It may not be an hour and a half, but 30 minutes a day will get you very far if you're doing it consistently, if it becomes a habit. um, And if you're doing it for over the course of, say, a couple of months. Um, so the one thing that supersedes your feelings is your habits. Like one thing that, that will help you overcome waiting to feel a certain way to do anything, waiting to feel a certain way to, 
um, make more money, waiting to feel a certain way to do anything in your life. One thing that supersedes your feelings is your habits. Your habits literally are establishing everything that you have in your life. So habits are defined as um, regular tendencies or practices, especially ones that are hard to give up. So one thing that um, Sean Covey, he's the ha- um, he's the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One thing that he says is that we become what we do repeatedly. So when you're ready to upgrade your life, you have to change what you do repeatedly in order for you to to um to do that upgrade so motivation is what gets you started but habit is what keeps you going um if you are in the habit of like I said I'm working on establishing healthier habits I gotta give up the cookies at night you know I gotta wake up in the morning and and go work out because that's the best time for me to to do that when I was you know, working on my relationship with God, one of the things that I was doing was working on my morning prayer time, my morning quiet time, my morning routine, getting in the habit of of being in the spirit of gratitude in the morning, of, of praying, of meditating, of journaling, of doing these things. All those things became habit. And now it's like, if I don't do that in the morning, I feel off. Like, I feel like something's off all day. Like, you know, I didn't get my morning meditation in, (laughs) um, something's not right. And so creating a new habit or doing something, um, establishing something new that you do repeatedly, that it's hard to give up, that it becomes a regular tendency, that it becomes a practice, that it's like ingrained in you to do something else. So that is the third way to upgrade your life. And the fourth and final way to upgrade your life is something that I am working on. And I'm a work in progress, guys. I don't come on this podcast and pretend to be perfect for you guys. I I think I share pretty openly the things that I'm working on. You know, as you can see, I'm working on being consistent. And one thing that comes with being consistent is being disciplined. Number four is being disciplined. That is how you upgrade your life. Like, I don't know about you, but I can raise my hand right now and say I would be much further in life if I was much more disciplined. Discipline is there when motivation is not enough. I love motivation. I listen to motivation all day. You know, I love listening to Les Brown. I love listening to um, E.T., the hip hop preacher. You know, I love listening to all these motivational videos and and things on um, Apple Music, I love listening to it. But you have to have the foundation and discipline when motivation is not enough. And so my goal moving forward is to establish more discipline. And discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. So it's the difference between writing down on a piece of paper, you know, that I want to make six figures and actually doing the steps to make six figures. For me, it's like that's the dis- the discipline is the difference between me writing down this year that I want to lose weight and it actually being May 2019 and me having lost the weight. Right. Me having um, done the things necessary to accomplish the goals. Discipline is the difference. And I could probably do a whole podcast on kind of how I'm becoming more disciplined, what I'm kind of working on, um, some of the steps that I'm kind of taking. And when I did um, my Dead Slate course, which was a course that I taught about um, how I eliminated or how I released $40,000 of debt, I talked about the discipline that was necessary um, to do that. And I talked about all the steps that I took to become more disciplined. But when I became more disciplined, I became more disciplined in that area of my life. Um, and I know that I, I need to to, to use that same motivation, that same determination to become more disciplined in other areas of my life, not just that particular area. So 
discipline is one of those things that I'm constantly working on. It's not something that happens overnight. When you want to become a disciplined person, it's something that you have to work on. It's something that you have to set as a goal, but then you have to actually take the actions uh, to do it. And so maybe I'll um, release something or we'll have a future podcast just talking about how do you become more disciplined in life? Because it is something that I think everybody needs. If <laughs> Nobody has a perfect life and I think everybody can use a little bit more discipline. So that's going to be our podcast for today. Just to recap, we talked about four ways to upgrade your life. So the first way is to upgrade your mindset. The second way is to upgrade your circle. The third way is to upgrade your habits. And the fourth way is to become more disciplined. So use discipline when motivation, because motivation is not enough. So I thank you all for listening to yet another episode of the Secrets of a Money Mogul podcast. Please rate and subscribe and I will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of a Money Mogul podcast. I know you know three to five people who could use this information. So please um, feel free to share it with them, share it on your social media, and be sure to tag me at my money mogul. I love hearing from you guys. I love seeing the feedback. Uh, and when you send me feedback, when you rate the podcast, it just reminds me every day that I am doing. Um, why I'm doing this and I'm just so thankful for you guys but it also helps new people learn about us so help spread the word um I love y'all I thank y'all and I will see y'all next week